Hello and welcome once again to Fair Tax Power Radio. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Malero. And we are the, the Fair, Fair Tax, Tax Guys. Guys. Having more fun than a human being should be allowed to have. Uh, oh, yes, I, we do. I think that's already in use somewhere. We just got to borrow that. <laughs> that's all right. We'll borrow it. We will do that. But we're, we're, we're here talking about the only tax reform program that will really, truly is a big solution to big problems, and that is the fair tax. Yeah. We have, uh, as we've mentioned in previous episodes, the current tax system is out of control, and it's actually going to implode under its own weight. People in Congress realize that the evasion is a serious problem, and then the abuse by the IRS and so forth, uh, it, it, and fraud. I mean, you may think that you're done with the uh, your income tax, but you may not even know that you have been a victim of fraud via the income tax. So, you just got to get rid of it. I mean, there's it, there's a much simpler system that Bob and I are talking about, and that's the fair tax. It is a simple sales tax, and it's got some features to it that are pretty important. So we've yeah, been before discussing we, those. Sam, before we continue with, with all of us various little points that might convince people that they like the fair tax, something we touched on last program. If you haven't heard it, you really need to go back and listen to it. But a critically critically important component of the fair tax is the prebate which is a ta- which is a tax refund everybody's familiar with a tax refund if you overpay your taxes you get some of it back that's right same thing with the fair tax if you overpay not actually if when you overpay what you owe you get some of it back and we say when because the fair tax will be collected on every dollar of spending but it's really not owed until your spending exceeds the poverty level so whatever is collected on that spending up to the poverty level is given back to you in the form of a prebate and i say we could talk for six seven episodes about the prebate (laughs) but you have to understand that and make sure that that's what it's all about and we have done our due diligence since 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 our last time here together and we have come up with the actual prebate figures of what it would be if the fair tax were in effect today go that's right uh now as we said the prebate reimburses you for the fair tax you'll be paying on the basic necessities of life. And you get to decide what the basic necessities are, not the government. That's right. And, and it's the simplest, the simplest way. I mean, we don't want to have a grocery store divided into, okay, um, this is basic necessities and these are not. No, that, that would be crazy. We can't do that. That and, would also invite all the lobbyists for everybody that's on the wrong side of the aisle to say, we should be over here in the tax-exempt yeah. portion as well. So we don't want somebody else deciding what is, uh, what is uh, basic necessity. For some people, beer and wine might be. For others, it wouldn't be. <laughs> so, you know, not, not going to weigh in on either side of that debate, but just to say that you get to decide what your basic necessities are. And you don't pay taxes on your spending up to the poverty level, which is what it takes to provide those basic necessities for yourself and your family. And the other thing about uh, not taxing on the basic necessities, um, well, we could design a system where we identify people at, at the lowest income levels and give them a card saying, I'm not subject to the fair tax. But that's, that's first, it's, it's fraud, yeah, fake fr- cards, big, big fraud. <laughs> How yeah. soon will the black market in those cards come up? And the stigma attached to it. We don't want to do that. Mm -mm. We want to make the fair tax 100% anonymous, okay? So they came up with this idea of the prebate, all right? It's it's technically called the family consumption allowance or a rebate. And the idea is every month uh, as you spend for your family, Food, clothing, shelter, medical costs, whatever, you know, basic necessities. And the fair tax is included in the price of everything you buy from dollar one. Except for used items. Uh, Yeah, used items don't Um, count. But yeah, you will pay the fair tax at the register every time you buy something. But you're not going to buy used food. Okay. Yeah. R- really I recommend against that. Oh, yeah. Gosh. That's that's you know that's oh, a that was bad more, idea. That was more information that I really needed <laughs> to know. <laughs> so food, clothing, shelter, and so forth. That's going to include the fair tax, and we want to make sure that people uh, that are just getting by. Well, what do we mean by just getting by? Well, it just so happens that the federal Department of Health and Human Services has poverty levels that they publish every year, and the for 2016. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, uh, mom and dad and two kids, all right, a family of four. Um, the poverty level for a family of four is $32,040, all 
All right, just right there at $32,000. Now, I'm cheating. I'm looking at the 2015 schedule, and it said 31860 So this will be adjusted on a year-to-year basis to adjust for inflation, and your purchasing power should be pretty much the same at every level. Yeah, I, I remember one year in which they said uh, it's not changing. We're leaving it the same, but that was just one year. But Bob is right. From, from last year to this year, it has gone up a little bit, which means the prebate. So they take that... $32,040, and they're saying this is what a family of four must spend just to stay alive, all right? Basic necessities, food, cloth, clothing, shelter, and so forth. And if you spend and, that, 23% of that is fair tax. Yeah, and that 23% would be $7,369. So as you buy the basic necessities for this family of four, you're also spending, included in the price of everything, is $7,369 for the fair tax, which is going to Uncle Sam. And so what they're going to do is, those, you're going to, if you're a family of four, you're going to get a rebate. And, they, and you're going to... And you don't owe it. Yeah, hence the name uh, prebate, the nickname prebate. And you take that $7,369 divided by 12, you get $614. So at the beginning of every month, you're going to get a direct deposit, a check. Somehow the government is going to get you a, a $614. And that is so that you have it in advance so that when you're spending on food, clothing, and shelter, basic necessities, you're going to be reimbursed in advance for the fair tax up to the poverty level. Now, like I said, if it's a family of four that's just making 32000 and they're just getting by, they're not doing a lot of extra stuff. They're not taking vacations. They're not buying big screen TVs, you know, uh, twice a year or something like that. They're just getting by. No government is so important that you have to collect taxes on what it costs to stay alive. It's just not, it's not something that we want to do. No, you should not have to pay taxes on what it costs to stay alive. So we're going to make sure that you're reimbursed for it. Yes, everybody will pay the fair tax, whether you're rich or poor, Whatever you purchase, except for used items, again, used items will not be subject to the fair tax. Um, but for the basic necessities, you will pay the fair tax, but you're going to be reimbursed at the beginning of the year. So it's going to be a wash. Now, if they get a raise, let's say mom and dad and two kids are earning $32,000 a year, and suddenly they get a raise. Things are going well at work. Uh, mom or dad, whatever, got a raise, and now they're earning 35000 It's still a family of four. The poverty level is still $32,040, but now they've got a little discretionary cash. What they do with that money is their business and nobody else's. They will not be taxed on it because under the fair tax, no income tax, all right? No income tax. So they can put it aside and they can put it in a savings account and save for a down payment on a house. They can take a vacation. Whatever they do, it's their business. All right. Well, you have kind of led into the next point that we want to cover on our little Jeff Foxworthy list here. And if you weren't listening, if you didn't catch the last one, you need to go back there because we're, we're going to uh, borrow the Jeff Foxworthy technique of, of reminding people that they might be a fair tax fan. That's right. And uh, as someone who has a daughter in college, <laughs> I know what it's like to try to save and invest to, uh, to make that happen. And if you'd like to save and invest totally free of federal taxation... You, you might, might be, be a, a fair, fair tax, tax fan. Because remember, the fair tax is a retail consumption tax. It is imposed only on the purchase of new goods and services. So it doesn't matter how much money you make or how you make it. You're taxed when you spend it. And if you don't spend it, if you save it, if you invest it, it's not taxed. And that family, that scenario I spelled out a few minutes ago there about the family who got a raise... And now they're earning more than just the poverty level, and they got a little cushion there. Okay, they put it in the bank, and they're saving for a down payment on a house. There's no tax on their interest. That's gone because there's no tax on income. Remember, interest is a form of income. And with the fair tax, the income tax will be gone. I think I mentioned that before. Yeah, and, and right now we've got all kinds of the IRS calls them tax deferred plans, 401ks. I had something called a 403b, and that is... The IRS will allow you to put away some of your money in one of these special accounts and not have it taxed yet. Yeah, but it's taxed when you pull it out and you and when you pull it out, not necessarily when you spend it. 
Yeah. When and, you when you get it back, then it's again that, that's taxed like it's like it's earned income. Yeah. The idea behind that is that when you're retired, you'll be in a lower income tax bracket, so you'll you'll be paying less taxes. Well, you're I'm still like paying income, taxes. I'm on like it. an income tax bracket of zero. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, exactly. That's, that's what the fair tax does. But and that's it, what we're aiming for. Again, folks. it's only imposed when you make a retail purchase of new goods or services, i.e. doctor's appointments, landscaping, stuff like that will include the fair tax. Because for right now, under that system, if you're paying your doctor, what you pay your doctor is taxable income to him. He has to take part of what you pay him and send it to the IRS as his income tax. So that cost is passed on to you. Yeah. So that's again, right. with a doctor or a landscaper or anything else like that, the uh, the embedded component of the income tax system that he's paying that goes away. So instead of char- just passing along his uh, tax liability and compliance cost and the price of his services, he just uh, tax on the fair tax like everybody else sends it to the IRS and nobody's uh, not the IRS sends it into the state. I'm sorry. Uh, IRS is going to go away completely under the fair tax. Yeah, because remember, what Bob is talking about, these embedded taxes that we currently have right now under the current system, because of the income tax and what it costs companies and individuals to comply with the income tax and the pay to the income tax, everything we purchase has an average of 22% additional. It's 22% higher because of our current tax system. 22% higher. All right? So... We're going to be we're going to be making things better for business. Yep. But the uh, the point again, if you'd like to save and invest, totally free of federal taxation, you might be a fair tax fan because the fair tax is the only tax reform proposal that makes that happen. You are taxed on your savings and investments under every other tax system that's uh, or the current system and every other tax system that's uh, been proposed. Yep. Just think of the that's going to be a boon to the savings industry and the investment industry. And just think of the different companies that are going to come up with different investment plans. Look, if you invest your money with us, we have this plan that does this, this, and this, all right? And there will be no income tax. And they'll be tripping over each other to to offer the better investment plan or the better savings plans. So it's it's going to be a boon. It's, it's going to really, really help the savings industry. And a country that has a good amount of savings is a healthy country. Mm-hmm. Now, we've touched on this a lot in the past, how abusive, how invasive the IRS is, how they have to have their little fat nose in all of your personal financial dealings. They know the ins and outs of all your financial dealings. If they don't like what they see, they can uh, knock on your door, appear at your doorstep, and uh, take your bank account because they think you're doing something wrong. It's abusive. It's invasive. And if you'd like to see the IRS disappear from the face of the earth forever... You, you might, might be, a, be fair a fair tax, tax fan. fan. And don't be fooled. There are a lot of political candidates out there. We're not going to name them by name. But a lot of them are trying to sell you the idea that a flat tax, and we've talked about that over the past couple of episodes, that a flat tax will allow the government to get rid of the Internal Revenue Service. Not so. Because a flat tax is still a tax on income. It is still collected from the individual, and it is still collected on the federal level. So you, you might change the name of it. You might get rid of the IRS by renaming it something else, but you're still going to have a federal agency that is charged with the administration and enforcement of a flat tax because it's still an income tax, and that agency can and undoubtedly will be just as abusive as today's IRS, given the enough time it'll happen. On that point alone, let's con- compare the income tax and a sales tax and income tax requires an enforcement agency enforcement okay they must force you to comply with the law and pe- people and companies will do what they can to low to increase their profits increase their income and so forth so if there's a way to avoid it they'll find it sometimes it's legal sometimes it's not tax avoidance is legal tax evasion is not so you have to enforce an income tax. The sales tax, you don't, I mean, how, how can you evade the, the sales tax? It's collected when you go to the store. You go to the store, you, you buy a piece of jewelry for your wife or whatever, the sales tax is included, boom, you're done. It's also anonymous. Yeah, but if the store collects sales tax on a particular transaction and does not remit that money back to the state uh, you know, revenue agents, it's the store, not you, the customer, that's in trouble. 
Yeah. So your enforcement with a, a sales tax, there is still some enforcement. You got to make sure that merchants that are collecting the sales tax are actually remitting it forward. But with an income tax, be it the flat tax or the current income tax system, you, you are having to monitor millions upon millions of individuals because each of those is a taxpayer. With a, a consumption tax like the fair tax, then all you have to monitor are the ones who collect it. And like 90% of the business transactions or retail transactions that happen in this country happen at places like Walmart and Target, the big box stores, like at like 500 big chain stores are responsible for more than 90% of all of the transactions. Keep your eye on those 500 as opposed to, you know, 200 million and enforcement becomes a whole lot easier and a whole lot less costly. Yeah. And Bob is absolutely right. I mean, even if it's uh, it not a, one of these huge box stores, let's say it's a, a guy who does your lawn, who comes once a week or whenever, you know, and does your lawn. And under the fair tax, yeah, he's going to have to charge the fair tax on the service he provides for you. And what if he doesn't turn it in? Well, remember that guy, Bob, that, or that we we talked about and was first saying that uh, the fair tax was going to do away with Social Security? Mm-hmm. He was also trying to tell us that if your lawn guy doesn't turn in the... Uh, the, the fair tax to the government, the government's going to come after you. How? <laughs> the government does not know who, which of the hundreds of landscapers out there is the one servicing your account. All they know is that this guy is not turning in his sales tax. We're going after him. That's right. It's the vendor They're who will not, be in if jeopardy. The, if the vendor doesn't remit the sales tax, the government has absolutely no way because it's anonymous to come after you because they don't know who you are. And, and plus, it's not... Probably not going to be the federal government that goes after the vendor. It's going to be the state because it is the state collection agency that will be collecting the fair tax for the federal government. And they know how to do this. I mean, they got people trying to escape. Not too many because it's just not easy. They got people who might be trying to evade the sales tax now. They come down on them like a hammer. They know how to do this, the individual states. So... It's not going to be a problem. Yeah. You're not going to be able to avoid, yeah. evade. The vendors have the got to have some kind of commercial you know, business license. Yeah. So, so the state or the city or whoever you're operating is going to know that you're in the landscaping business, for example. Mm-hmm. And they'll know that if you're in the landscaping business and you're in the landscaping business next year and next year and next year, you're making some money. You've got some income. You are charging customers for your service. Then they know that you're collecting this tax. And if you're not collecting the tax, then they know that you're not. And they'll come get you. Yeah. So, uh, And the uh, individuals are off the hook. The evasion is, is going to be pretty much a non-issue on, under the fair tax. So that that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. But again, the fair tax is the only only tax reform proposal that actually eliminates the IRS and anything like it because it eliminates the need for it. The fair tax will be collected by the states, 45 of whom are already collecting a state sales tax, which means all the automated software that these vendors have to to run their point of sale systems and inventory systems and all, it's there. Even if you live in a state that does not have a sales tax, the uh, vendor that that you're buying your computer software already has that function built in. You just have to implement it, and it's it's like activating a few lines of code. No problem. Yep. And Bob knows about that because he was a computer <laughs> programmer for many yeah, years. Many so, years. Um, yes. So if you'd right. like to eliminate the IRS, you may be a fair tax fan. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just not going to be necessary. And and won't that be... Won't that be a wondrous day when we don't have to worry about the IRS anymore? Is is are there any members of the IRS fan club listening? Oh, I don't think so. But. Yeah, if there are, email us at thefairtaxguys.com. dot com. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, thefairtaxguys at gmail dot com. There we go. And if anybody's worried about the IRS disappearing, only being a temporary thing. The fair tax is contingent upon repeal of the 16th Amendment. We've talked about that. The amendment to the Constitution passed in 1913 that allowed the government to take an income tax from you because prior to that was unconstitutional. And so the the fair tax, I say, is contingent upon that being repealed. An act of Congress like the fair tax cannot change the Constitution. But there's a uh, provision in there that says if the 16th Amendment is not repealed, through the normal constitutional amendment process, which takes at the maximum seven years, then if uh, at the end of the seven years the 16th Amendment is still on the books, the fair tax sets, sunsets, then the IRS comes back. But the only way that the IRS can, can come back is if the income tax comes back. 
Yeah. And if the 16th Amendment is repealed, if we get the fair tax fully implemented, the 16th Amendment will be repealed. There will be no more income tax. It will be unconstitutional. And the IRS or anything like it just physically cannot exist. It will be a great day when we, re- when we repeal the 16th Amendment and erase that big mistake that happened 103 years ago. It was mm-hmm. a bad idea then. It's a bad. It's a worse idea now because it's grown into a, well, it's grown into a monster. And uh, so, it, it, Bob is absolutely right. It, the fair tax is contingent on the repeal of the Sixteenth Amendment. Very, very important. So that's how you eliminate it forever. You remove the constitutional authority for it to exist. Yep. Now, that, moving forward, we've touched on the. Kind of touched around this a little bit, but let's address this more directly. If you like the idea of keeping the government's fat nose out of your personal finances, you You might might be be a a fair tax tax fan. fan. Oh, this is, you know, we talked about the civil asset forfeiture, and I've mentioned several times before, go to YouTube and look for the video about Carol Hinders. Uh, It's a short, it's a little over two minutes, and it's how the IRS decided that they didn't like the cash deposits that she was making into a bank. She runs an all-cash restaurant. There are probably not too many all-cash restaurants around. I've been to one or two myself, but most of them will take, you know, a credit card of some kind. But she runs an all-cash restaurant. She's been doing it for decades. So obviously people like what she's doing and they don't mind the all-cash business. But for some, And she's been doing it, like I said, for decades. Suddenly... A few years ago, the IRS decided that she was structuring. Now, what do we mean by structuring? Okay, there's a law that says that if you deposit more $10,000 or more in a bank account, you have to submit a report to the IRS because they want to know about it. Under 10000 you don't have to. They think you might be a drug dealer or some other criminal. That's, yeah. that's the uh, ill intention. But the unintended consequences are hell to pay sometimes. Yeah, and for some reason, they're looking at this uh, this uh, lady's, uh, she's kind of a grandmother type, and they're looking at her bank account, and they're seeing these cash deposits, you know, maybe a 1000 here, a couple thousand there, something like that, from her restaurant business. Question well, for you. Where's she going to put the money? Why are they looking at her bank account? Yeah, that's a darn good question. <laughs> I wish I could answer that. And, and again, we need to make this go away. We need to make the IRS. So that, that, is, that is one of the problems uh, that, that we have with the system. It's so intrusive. When you fill out your tax reform, uh, tax return at the end of the year or you know, before April 15th, you've got to divulge all kinds of information. What business of the government is, is it, you know, like what car you own because you're, you're doing employee business expenses? What car you own? When you bought it? How many personal miles do you put on it? That type of stuff. Holy cow. Thomas uh, Jefferson found that rather unbelievable. Yeah. How many children you have? What did you give to the, to the church, you know, and, and the other uh, charities that you care about? All that stuff. And, and, well, we heard it from Thomas Jefferson. He was not too happy when he heard about that, was mm-hmm. he? But, I mean, it, it's insane that you have to divulge to the government uh, information about your finances that you, you wouldn't share with your kids. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, why, why, why does the government <laughs> need to know stuff that, that the rest of your family is, is really, or the kids anyway, really don't need to know about? Yeah, so, I mean, all, the, all that personal stuff that you have to divulge to the to the. Uh, uh, to the IRS. It's just not necessary. And we will do away with that nonsense when we go to the fair tax. The fair tax is anonymous. All right. There are no deductions. You go to the store, you buy something, you pay the fair tax when you pay for the item. That's it's that simple. There's no loopholes, deductions, special exemptions. There's no tax brackets. It's a sales tax. It's simple. It's simple. Yep. So, so the government, and you make that the state government, knows who's in business because they give you the business licenses. So they know who to keep an keep eye on. The individuals, government no longer cares what your financial picture is with a fair tax. Does that's right. not care. It's none of their doggone business. Yep. And, and again, so, the fair tax is the only one that does that because a flat tax is still a tax on income. You still have to report what you make. You still have to report where you made it from. There's still all kinds of ways to cheat on it. But uh, the fair tax, again, is the only one 
that gets the government completely out of your personal finances because it's enforced at the vendor level, not at the in, uh, individual level. You know, this country did very well uh, without the income tax for 120-something years. Um, this fledgling country that some other countries were betting that was not going to, is not going to survive. The United States of America was not going to survive, and some of them were working uh, to make sure we didn't survive. But because of our declaration and our Constitution, people were allowed to succeed. People were allowed to succeed without the government getting in their way, without the king wanting to know what they're doing or having a cut and so forth. And this country grew and became a superpower. And we would do a lot better without the income tax. Amen. So let's recap what we've got here so far over the past couple episodes. If you'd like to have more money in your pocket by eliminating federal withholding and payroll taxes from your paycheck, you you might might be be a a fair tax tax fan. fan. If you think feeding your family is a higher priority than feeding the government, you You might might be be a a fair tax fan. fan. If you'd like to get a tax refund every month instead of maybe once a year, you You might might be be a a fair fair tax fan. fan. If you'd like to save and invest totally free of federal taxation, you You might might be a fair fair tax fan. fan. If you'd like to eliminate the IRS from the face of the earth forever, you You might might be a fair fair tax fan. fan. And if you like the idea of keeping the government's nose out of your personal financial business, you You might might be a fair fair tax fan. fan. Oh, I I am. No doubt. (laughs) Well, you can see that Bob and I are very passionate about that. That's why we take the time to do this show. And please tell others about it. We're on Spreaker now. Uh, If you're listening to this show, you're either on SoundCloud, YouTube, or Spreaker. And uh, Spreaker is our new uh, platform, and this promises to be a better distribution platform for us. And and It's also got an app for your smartphone, so if you want to listen to it while you're on the go, just uh, download the free app to your smartphone and listen to it. Tell others about it, please. Okay, I do the production part, you do the distribution part. Am I I mistaken or am I correct that you're going to try to have a new episode up every Friday? Yeah, every Friday morning I put up an episode. And so, uh, you know, Bob and I are, are pumping out these things, and we're going to make sure that, that we have uh, a program for you every Friday. And it's critical this year. Six, 2016 is really critical because the House Ways and Means Committee is going to do something with substantial tax reform. And we've got to do our best to make sure it's the fair tax. Remember, we mentioned before, the new chair of the Ways and Means Committee, Kevin Brady, has been a fair tax co-sponsor since the very beginning when the legislation was first uh, uh, submitted to Congress. That in itself is not enough. He's got to be fair and balanced, you might say. He's got to consider all the options. And there's going to be, there are people in there about the flat tax. There are people in there about the VAT tax. The fair tax has the most research behind it. We have the, the biggest ground game. And we have the most co-sponsors in in, uh, Congress. You'd think it would be a shoe-in. It's not. We really, really need your help. All right. And remember, we've got the system we've got because the politicians have control of the tax code. They can make it say whatever they want it to. And they have given us this 70,000-plus page monstrosity. So it's going to take some pressure. Some, some pressure from we the people at the grassroots level to make the politicians do the right thing because they, they'll rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic and, and call it meaningful tax reform if we let them get away with it. So help us out, folks. All right, go to bigsolution.org. You can help us out there. You can learn more about the fair tax at fairtax.org. And once a month is the webinar. You can go to fairtax.org slash web, uh, webinar fairtax.org slash webinar to register for the webinar. That's the fourth Thursday of every month. Yes, and become no. a member of Americans for Fair Taxation as yeah, well. Please we do. need numbers, all right? Please so do. So again, thank you for listening to a Fair Tax Power Radio. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Malero. Reminding you once again that the Fair Tax is America's big solution. And once you understand it, you will demand it. Fair Tax is coming. Don't stand in the way. Fair Tax is coming across the USA.